Good morning, I'm Ryan Abbott here today for your weekly devotion. One of the questions you get asked most as a Christian, and one I was just asked just a couple weeks ago at the Christian Fellowship Group at Valor, is why is there pain and suffering in the world if God exists? Why would a merciful God let all this happen? And it's a good question, and one that we should probably all know an answer to in case we were asked. So today we're going to dive into why all the hurt in the world exists. Romans 5 and 12 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. In the Garden of Eden, there was no suffering in the world. Everything was perfect, no sin, no pain, no death. However, in the story hopefully all of us know, Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of the one tree God, God told them not to eat of. When God discovered this, he cast them out of the garden, and God had to punish them. He curses Eve and through Eve all women to have pain in childbirth, and that all women should be submitted under their husbands. To Adam, he cursed him and all men to have to work to eat. God says, in toil you shall eat of it. And finally, he curses all humans to die, saying, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. But notice here that God d didn't put the suffering we think of today into our lives. These curses are just aspects of human life instead of true suffering. Having to work for food isn't exactly the number one world issue. Going back to Romans 5 and 12, it describes how sin and death entered the world through man. Notice that it wasn't even God that caused death. God warned Adam and Eve that the day that they ate of the tree, they would die. They chose to eat the fruit knowing the consequences, and God had no choice but to fill that promise. So from the beginning, it wasn't God that caused the suffering in the world. It was not God, but sin that brought suffering into the world, and it was man's choice to bring sin into the world, not God. So, at this point, people may ask, why did God put the tree into the garden that had the opportunity to cause sin? Well, Galatians 5 and 13 can help answer that question. It says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. This verse is telling us that we are called to be free. It goes on to tell us to not use our freedom to sin, but to love one another. God honors our free will. God placed man on the earth to have a right relationship with him. It's not a true relationship if you have no choice but to be with him. That's why God put the tree in the garden. That's why God can't simply remove all the sin in the world. If God steps in and says, This evil, this suffering, I don't like it. I'm going to get rid of it. Then, he removes our free will. Without sin and suffering, there isn't any choice on whether to serve God. And if we don't have any choice, then we can't truly love him. Even after the prophesied 1,000 year reign, God releases the devil for a short time to let people choose, because throughout that time there is no sin, so no choice. God lets there be sin in the world so we can have the relationship we need with God. Unfortunately, that free will means that there is suffering in the world as well when people don't choose God. Despite God not causing suffering and not wishing it upon us, he can use it for his glory. God oftentimes uses suffering to shape us, to mold us, to be ready for a relationship with God. It is quite common for someone to come to God because of suffering. There have been many times that when a person is at their lowest point is when they finally make the decision to come to God. There is something about that suffering that makes the soul long for Jesus. Psalm 119 and 71 says, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The author, most likely David, is saying that the trials he faced help, just helped his walk with God and motivated him in learning his word. Just like with David, God can use our mistakes and suffering to further our walk with him. Some people think that once you get saved, you're free from those trials and tribulations, but that, that is certainly untrue. God will be there to help guide you through them, but in Matthew 5 and 45, it says that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Both sinners and believers have good days and bad ones. God doesn't discriminate. He sends trials down on everyone. These hardships are necessary to survive, because without them, you can grow complacent with God. If everything is going great with or without God, it doesn't exactly motivate you to fur further your relationship with God. But through struggle, you realize how much you need God, and it helps you grow closer to Him. Jesus is the only person who can guide you through the struggles. 
There's a big difference between the cold, harsh world that offers no help through your trials, and the warm, guiding hand of God that protects you from the enemy. Suffering also provides a contrast between people who are saved and people who aren't. You see these people in the world, drowning in their sin and suffering, and the believer who faces the trials with joy in their heart, with God leading them through. And when a Christian goes through a trial, they come out a better person, but the world comes out on a thread or never comes out at all. The difference between a believer and a non-believer is biggest in the toughest times of life. The, that difference speaks to others. When you face all these things with a smile on your face, it can witness to others, help guide them to Jesus. When they, when they see you go through the valley of the shadow of death, with joy in your heart, they think to themselves, I want that. I want to be able to go through life with joy. It witnesses to the world another way God use, uses suffering for his glory. I hope you've learned to re how to respond to someone asking these tough questions a little bit better, and maybe even learn something yourself on why God would let suffering and sin exist in the world. Have a great day.